Hi and welcome to Essential Lightroom. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the December update for Lightroom CC and specifically the new features that have been added into this. Now, the nice thing is that this really does have a big impact if you're dealing with presets because it opens up some of the functions that the previous version of Lightroom CC, the online version, didn't really have access to. So in this video, I'm going to show you what they are and how you can use them. So this new update that Adobe have rolled out really does bring out a whole range of new features across the entire product range for Adobe. So if you've got Photoshop or you're dealing with Lightroom Classic or Lightroom CC, there are quite a few enhancements that have really been brought out. And one key one they brought out is they've made the new auto button something you can actually start to use. Previously, this was one of those things you click on it and it didn't really make a particularly good example of your image. So what they've done is they've started using machine learning where they've taken a look at when you make a sort of an auto selection, you click the auto button, it's going to look at the image, the content that's in there, and it's supposed to reference those using machine learning with tens of thousands of images and the way they've been edited online. This is then supposed to give you a much better representation of what the image should look like. Now, again, this is one of the things, it's not a one click fits all, but it is a good starting point. So what I want to do is take this image as an example, open up the light panel on the right hand side, and let's take a look at what the auto button actually does. So we click on that, you can see it now gives us a much better representation as a good starting point. This is one of those buttons that's never going to be a be all and end all, but it does give you a good starting point. Now, what you can see is, on the previous versions, and there's lots of videos on YouTube that covers this in a lot more detail than I'm going to do, you can see what it's done now is it's actually starting to use all of those controls in the light panel. It's also using some of the controls inside the color panel. So you can see we've used the vibrance and the saturation have now been referenced. In older versions, these are basically ignored. So this does give you a good starting point. So if you are struggling to get an image, click the auto button, see what it does. So that's the first update. That doesn't really have a huge impact upon some of the things we do on this channel, primarily dealing with presets and creating great looking effects. So let's take a look at what we now have. Let's just open up one of these images. Let's just choose this one as an example. Okay, let's just close this panel down and go back to the light panel. You should now see we've got an additional icon at the top to the right hand side of the auto button. That now gives us the tone curve. Now this is one of the things that was missing in the first iteration of Lightroom CC and for me it was one of those key things that really did spoil the whole piece of software. Now this has been added, it's really given us control of what we want to do. So now if we take a look at the presets and you can see I've got some of our presets installed like the hipstagram, these rely quite heavily on the tone curve to be able to manipulate the tonal information and maybe some of the colors inside the image. Previously, we had no real effect on those. So let's take a look at, for example, we've got things like bleach bypass with a twist. Now, if we click on that, you can see the effect is applied and we now have the tone curve, which is still editable, like in the normal classic Lightroom. So we can still come in and tweak this and edit it, but we now have that function built in. So if we just reset this image, so it's come back up, revert to original, we can now see that if I want to make edits to this, I can quite easily do that you can see I go in and I can start adjusting this directly exactly the same way as Lightroom works. We can also switch through the different modes. So we can click on this option, which now gives us a sort of the typical way that we would work inside Lightroom. We can jump over to the point curve mode, which is allows us to directly, directly influence any point that we add to our tone curve. We can even go in and actually start editing and controlling the overall color curves as well. And one of the things that I wish they'd bring into Lightroom is this color representation. So we've got the red channel selected. You can see on the left hand side at the top, we've got the red. The bottom right hand side, we've got green. These are the opposing colors. So in other words, if I start to drag this center point down towards this bottom right hand corner, you can see the image immediately starts to take on a more green tint. Alternatively, if I take that and start to push it up towards the top left corner, we start to get a more red tint. So this visual representation, especially for beginners, is a great way to be able to show them when they start making alterations to this tone curve, exactly what colors are going to be brought into the image so you can really get a much better idea of what's going on. But the tone curve doesn't just stop there. We've also got some additional tools that really help working with this. If you are going in and editing an image and you're dealing with the RGB channels, it's good to sometimes be able to see where your particular curves for any of those colors actually reside inside the overall point curve or tone curve. So you can do that. If you right click over the tone curve itself, you can see we've got a context menu that pops up. 
And what we can say is we can say show all curves. And now you can see if I edit any of these, I can start to directly influence the tone curve for that particular color, but I can still see it in conjunction with any of the other options or any of the curves that I've got working in our image. You can turn those on and off. You've got the option to snap to grid if you want to, if you want to sort of be able to snap to this nice small grid and you can see it increases the size of the grid. So this is a great way of making sure that if you're making adjustments and you want to be quite specific, then you can use this grid option as well. Again, it can be enabled, disabled. We can reset the channels, we can reset all channels, we can put everything back to its default. We can turn this back off. So a really great implementation of the point curve in the new Lightroom CC. So the next new addition they brought into Lightroom CC is the ability to start dealing with split toning. So what we need to do is if we come up to the effects panel, you can see we've got now a new icon on there which gives us the split toning option. We click on there, brings up the split toning display. It's a little different to Lightroom Classic, but again, it's one of those things that I think it makes a really great visual way of dealing with things. This is much the same as if you click to select the color from the color sort of panel and you can use the eyedropper. This kind of has that specifically set in there. So you can see we on the left hand side, we've got the shadows on the right hand side, we've got the highlights and in the middle, we have the mixer option. So let's just choose the shadows, for example, and let's just say we want to put a nice sort of orange tone into there. Well, we can do that. And if we come over to the highlights and we'll say we put a sort of tealy kind of color in there, you can do that. And then you can use the slider to balance the mix out to get exactly what you want. So really, really easy to deal with. If we want to reduce the color in there, any of those colors, we can just simply drag that down. It becomes less saturated so we can balance that out and really get a nice mix. So very quick and easy and a great addition to the new Lightroom CC update. So what does this mean if you're the kind of person that likes to work with presets, especially if you've got a ton of presets that you've got for Lightroom Classic and you want to start using those inside Lightroom CC? Well, the nice thing is now if we open up the presets panel and we take a look at any of the preset sets we've got in here, let's just reset this image, for example. And what we can do is let's just say a nod to T and O. We can click on that and now any of these presets that start to utilize any of these tools that were previously missing, we can now come in and start editing them. So for example, if we come back over to the tone curve, if we wanted to, we can easily come into this and you can see there's a tone curve being applied as part of the preset and now I have access to be able to make changes to it. This also means that when you save out your preset to share, it's going to give you the option to create your presets and use the tone curve alongside the split toning option. So we really now have a really good, powerful system to be able to start working with this that we're not reliant upon dealing with just Lightroom Classic. So really good. Thank you Adobe for actually bringing this out. And I look forward to the next edition, the next update that will bring some of those extra missing features. Well, that's what I wanted to show you just to give you a demonstration of these new key tools that have been added into Lightroom CC that give you the ability to work with not only our presets, both free and commercial, but any presets out there. Or if you want to create your own and start to share these back and forth with the normal Lightroom CC Classic Edition. So that wraps up this video. Hope it's given you insight into what these new tools and functions allow you to do. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or anything else we cover on the channel, or anything you'd like to see covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.